time, yes, hap, hap, happy homework time is here yet again. Let's start out in the customary manner by placing our name at the top of the page in the line labeled name. I'll write my name, you write yours, and then take a minute and write today's date. Come on, do it. You know, might as well do things right. It's there, so fill it in. All right, our instructions here. We're, I think there's going to be one of those little faster homework nights. Are right, to label each number line with the fraction shown on the tape diagram. So here, here's your number line. And you see how it aligns with the tape diagram. Uh, circle the fraction that labels the point on the number line that also names the shaded part of the tape diagram. Let's just jump right in. We see we're going, this, this whole tape is one whole. So that means the end of the tape, the end of the number line is one. Okay, so that is one. That's kind of a shoddy looking one, but it's going to have to do. All right, which means now at the other end, what's this? Okay, zero. Now, what are we talking about here? We're talking about thirds, right? One, two, three, we have thirds. So if we're starting from zero, this would be one third. And this point here would be two thirds. Now, the one that we already labeled here, let's just go ahead and put just so we know what we're doing here, that's, that's three-thirds, okay? And even over here with the zero, we could put zero-thirds equals, also known as zero. Now, what is the, the fraction? It's one-third, okay? So that means we just circle one-third. That's it. We got a couple more like this. Let's go hit those and hit them hard. And here we go, B and C. Let's do it the same way. Notice in both these... We can kind of take a look at both, pull back the camera a bit and take a look at both. Again, the tape is one whole, so we can go ahead and just label the end of it one. We know that's what's going on there, and we know down at the other end, okay, we're starting from zero. Now, it wouldn't necessarily have to be that way, although I think that's mostly what we'll be seeing, um, but we could have mixed numbers or negative numbers even. Okay, we're not going to, but we could. All right, so now let's look. We have one, two, three, four, five, six parts here. Okay, so this is zero six. And we'll do as we did on the first one with these again. So this would be one six and two six and three six and four six and five six. And then the one hole is six six. And note, my little pretties, yeah, they're going to make us suffer on that one. We have to write a whole bunch of stuff. All right, but anyway, what's our fraction here? How many are shaded? Two out of six. That means two six is the fraction. And so we circle it. That one's done. Boom, just like that. All right, what do we have going on here? We have one, two, three, four shaded out of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that means we have twelfths. We're talking about twelfths. So we start off with zero twelfths, one twelfths. I know this is a pain to have to label all these, but you know, you'll live. Uh, four twelfths. And look, let's just pause while we're here. We know this, we already said four out of twelve are shaded, so let's go ahead and do that next step and just circle this while we're here. And then we have five twelfths and 6 twelfths, which by the way, you notice would be equal to 1 half, right? That's the halfway point, 6 is half of 12. 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths. I'm trying to leave a little room so I can squeeze in here. 12 twelfths, which is equal to one whole. Beautiful. Let's go on to number two, which actually asks about these from number one. So kind of take a little ch -ch -ch snapshot here for number two. All right. And as promised, number two, we have to refer back to number one. If you remember in 1A, the fraction was one third. In 1B, it was two sixths. And in 1C, it was four twelfths. Okay. So I'm just going to write those down. Now, so what we're asked here is write number sentences using multiplication to show that the fraction in A, one-third, is equivalent to the fraction in B, two-sixths. 
We did a ton of this already. We're going to just fly through this stuff here. Watch this. So remember all this? One third. We're using multiplication. So we know. Just set up that multiplication. That's what we're doing. And we want to prove that um, one third is equivalent to two six. That these are equal. So that one third equals two six. Well, what is the relating factor between three and six? It's times two, right? That's the, the factor. Three times two is six. And, and you notice the same is true up here, although it would have to be the same for them to be equivalent. They would have to have the same relative factor, so one times two is two. Look, that's it. Boom, like we did tons of that already. And we want to prove that A, one-third, is also equal to C. All right, so again, we're going to say, well, one-third is, set up the multiplication, one-third times some value of one with the same number in the numerator and denominator, will then be equal to 4 twelfths. So what's the relating factor between 3 and 12? 3 times what is 12? 4, of course. And so it, can we rightly place the same in the numerator, give us that value of 1 that doesn't change the value of 1 third, but just uh, changes the form so we have an equivalent? 1 times 4 is 4, 3 times 4 is 12. We just proved that 1 third also equals 4 twelfths. And of course, by extension, we'd see that 2 sixths of course, is equal to 4 twelfths. So up here in our little notations, we could write this, that we have a triple equivalency there. And look at that. Number two is done. Woo, moving on. Now look, in number three, this is the same thing we did in number one. It's just that this time, we have to draw the number line. Okay. Like, like they were sitting around in Eureka math lane going, oh gosh, that's about all we have to really review with them. Well, we can't have homework be that short. We got to have them do the same thing again, but make it a little harder. Okay. I'm just busting on them. Love you, Eureka. All right. So here's our number line. In fact, let me just take a minute and go ahead and draw all three of them. And notice I'm drawing them from end to end of the tape diagram. It should match that. It should match that tape diagram. All righty. And then I'll go ahead and place the arrows at the end. See, and remember from geometry, the definition of a line extending onward in both directions to infinity? Well, same is true of a number line. Ha, ha, ha. And in fact, I'll go ahead and mark all three of them. Might as well kind of do this factory procession style. So there's my zero mark. I could have made that arrow a little further out. Yeah, I know. All right, and then my marks for the fractional parts and my mark for the one whole. Same thing here. I'm just, I'm just copying the marks from here. That's all I'm doing here. There's no mystery or magic. Just zoop, there's a line. Make a line below it on the number line. That's all. I'm just reproducing the lines of the tape diagram onto my number line. And yes, I realize I should have given some more room for my zero and one. But alas. In fact, you know, I'm going to do this uh, a little more in the mechanized factory. Are you studying American history, the Industrial Revolution? Well, yeah, what we have here is, is a factory line. I know that all these are zero because all three tape diagrams, the whole tape is one. So they all start at zero and they all go to one. Okay, beautiful. See, so now I got everything all set up to go. I like doing it that way. All right, so now this one has one, two, three, four parts. So we're talking about fourths. And this time, because we did it on number one, right, I'm going to skip doing the zero fourths and four fourths and just label the fractional units as instructed here, okay? So there's one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths. And the fraction represents, obviously, two out of four, two fourths. So I circle that one. That's it. Okay, so here we have, you, we could just kind of skip count here, right? We see four, and four is eight, so we're talking about eighths. That's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and of course one whole would be eight eighths. What's the actual fraction represented by the tape diagram? It's four out of eight, four eighths, so I'll circle that bad boy. All right, now here we can see, look, we have five shaded, five unshaded, so five out of ten, five tenths, so we have one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, 
four tenths, five tenths. I can go in circle. I know that's my uh, that's my fraction. Six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, and of course nine tenths. And so that's done. But you probably notice something that they actually align here perfectly. You can uh, get a sense of what's going on here in terms of equivalent fractions. Let's take that knowledge with us and finish out this homework time. All right, so we recall back in A and B, the fractions there from, from number three were two-fourths and four-eighths. I'm just going to jot that down. You have it before you, but I want to put it here so we can see it. Our instructions are to write a number sentence using division. Oh, ha, ha. To show the fraction represented in 3A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 3B. So this is actually a little tricky. This is one where I'm like, well, I'm glad you're here doing this with me. Because the tendency would be to write, for many reasons, the two-fourths first. And you would find very quickly that you can't do it that way, really. It's just not going to work. So, um, and here's why. Because we're dividing, and just to put things in simplest terms, this isn't always true. But generally speaking, when we're dividing, we're starting with a bigger number and ending up with a smaller number, right? Uh, can, can I put it that in those terms? I know that's not like the most mathematically precise way of putting it. Um, but we couldn't go from 2 fourths, divide that, by a value of 1 and end up with smaller digits, okay? So that's I, just trying to give this to you in the broadest term. When we're composing uh, and dividing, we're going to want to start with the 4 eighths in this case, with the one with the larger digits. It's not a larger number. They're equivalent, but it's, it has the larger digits, the 4 and 8. And, uh, and here, let me, let me show you why. Let me demonstrate it with this example. If we set it up for a division sentence, we know what we want to end up with is two-fourths, right? Okay, so what's the relationship between eight and four here in terms of division? Well, it's divided by two, right? Eight divided by two is four. And so we'll do the same here in the numerator, and this is obviously true then. Four divided by two is two. Eight divided by two is four. Therefore, four-eighths equals two-fourths. If we tried to do it the other way, and I won't write it, just picture it, two-fourths divided by what? So like two divided by what is four? Well, one-half, yes, I know. Okay, but, but two divided by what whole number is four? Mm, well, nothing, right? No whole number. So it, it just simply doesn't work. Um, so you have to switch it around. So that's why, glad you're here with me doing homework time. Can you believe? Look at that. And we are now ready to finish out. I'm going to notate my notes here that those are equal. Um, and we're ready to finish out with number five. Let's go do that. All right. And number five is another one that I am happy that you are here with me to do because it is a little wacky. Um, we're to partition a number line from zero to one into fourths and then decompose three-fourths into six equal lengths. That last sentence can be a little confusing, or very confusing, or impossible to decipher, uh, an enigma wrapped in a mystery, so to speak. So I'm going to make a nice, generously long number line. I've got plenty of space here. Um, and put my arrows at each end. And then let me start by putting, and this is the way, this is, uh, a, a way to do it that works when you're drawing number lines. Okay, so we're going from zero to one, okay? So let me go ahead and mark and label zero, mark and label one. Now remember from doing rectangles and dividing them into fourths, that fourth is easy because you split it in half, right? And then you split each half into half. So boom and boom. But we're talking about fourths. I was using the word half, but we're talking about fourths. So this would be one-fourths, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, which is equal to one. Okay, so let's label those. One-fourth, two-fourths, and three-fourths. Now, when they say decompose three-fourths into six equal lengths, you might think, oh, I need to make six lines in here or to make six parts or end up with 20-fourths or something. What, what they're trying to say is, imagine this is cake again. And I really want to explain this because if you see this on the mid-module assessment, I want you to understand what these instructions mean. Think about that cake. You, you ate a quarter of the cake. You have three quarters of it left. 
And let's picture it's actually three big pieces. And then somebody says, well, we have these three-fourths of the cake left, these three big pieces of cake, three-fourths of the cake. Um, but we still have six, we have six people here and we are still hungry for cake. So let's make those three quarters into six pieces of cake. That's how we can think of it here. So if you were to take each of those three pieces of cake, so now to look at the number line, thinking about cake, one piece of cake, two piece of cake, three piece of cake, we want to make that six pieces of cake? Yeah, so I simply can just like cut each piece of cake in half. See, and now I've decomposed the three-fourths into six equal lengths. That's what they're talking about there. And that's all we have to do there. So now we're going to write a number sentence using multiplication to show what fraction represented on the number line is equivalent to three-fourths. Okay, so let's go back to the number line. Now we would have, in fact, I'm going to go, even though the instructions don't say to do so, I'm going to go ahead and decompose this empty piece of cake, so to speak, in, in, into uh, equal lengths as well. So look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of cake, which makes sense. I know we only have three-fourths, but pretend with me here. Um, so eight pieces, including the vacant spots. Um, so we have eighths up top, which makes sense because we cut those fourths in half. We decompose the, the fourths, so now we have eighths. So let's just label this so we can see what we're talking about. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths. And do this with me because this is valuable. It'll make it so easy. Six eighths, seven eighths, and of course one will be equal to eight eighths or four fourths. Okay, so now look. We want to show what fraction represented on the number line is equivalent to three-fourths. Again, these directions are a little befuddling. But now look at this. Ah, what fraction on the number line is equivalent to three-fourths? It's six-eighths. Okay, so now, because we're doing from multiplication, again, I'm speaking in a very generalistic way here, not precisely mathematically, but we're doing multiplication. We're going to go from smaller digits to larger digits. We're talking about multiplication of whole numbers. Okay, so we're going to start with the three-fourths. And we want to prove with multiplication that 3 fourths indeed is equal to 6 eighths. All right. So there's our 6 eighths. Well, what's the relating factor here? 4 times what is 8? 2, of course. And we'll do the same here and prove that's true because 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. Therefore, 3 fourths equals 6 eighths. Now we're going to do the same thing but in the inverse using division. And again, generally speaking, not with precise uh, you know, mathematical language, but generally speaking, when we're talking about the division of whole numbers, we're going from larger digits to smaller digits. So now, because we're going in division in the inverse, we're going to start with the 6 eighths. So starting from the 6 eighths, we'll say that 6 eighths divided by some value of 1, where the numerator and denominator are the same, it's a value of 1, will be equal to 3 fourths. Well, it's easy to see what the relating factor is here. 8 divided by what is 4? Of course, 2. We just did it in the multiplication. And then, of course, 6 divided by 2 likewise is 3. So this checks out 6 eighths indeed is equal to 3 fourths. We're not crazy. Well, maybe a little. Because here we are. We did it again. Nice job. You completed another homework time, and I'll see you again next time. It is once again homework time.